Good morning and welcome to the 2022 Budsmail Motor Cars Virtual Auto Show. My name's Taylor and with me today we have Mercedes-Benz product specialist Scott Powell and Anthony Polvinali. Hi guys. Hey. Morning Taylor. We're going to be coming along with you guys today as we talk about all the cool and exciting things happening with Mercedes-Benz this year. But before we get started, don't forget to like subscribe and comment all throughout the video. We can answer all of your questions in real time and want to make sure we show you exactly what it is that you want to see. So without further ado, let's get the show started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2022 Mercedes-Benz Auto Show presented by Smale Mercedes-Benz in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Today, we will be connecting you directly to our showroom floor with a live product specialist and cameraman. If you have a question, Leave it in the comments section and we will provide you live answers and demonstrations on your favorite Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Without any further ado, let's start the broadcast with your hostess, Taylor Smale. All right, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? Good, <laughs> doing well, Taylor. Ready Doing to talk well. about all the exciting things Mercedes has going on? Absolutely. I know. Um, real quick before we get started, I wanted to tell everyone um, chiming in about a giveaway we have going on the week of the auto show. If they visit smailcars.com slash enter, we're giving away an Apple Watch, an Apple TV. We have a Smail gift bucket with a complimentary detail, which I'm sure everyone could use this type time of year. Um, so go ahead and visit that link, fill out a quick form, and you could go home with one of these prizes. But all righty, I think we're going to be starting with the GLE 350 this morning. Well, Looks first like I want to tell you, I want the bucket. I want the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially this time of year, spring cleaning, like good time to get your car completely clean. I think we might have lost Scott. So oh, we're actually sorry. going to a uh, we're actually going to a, a live GLE that's in the showroom right now. Uh, we're kind of in luck today because uh, these these have been hard to get your hands on. We've uh, and, and Scott can chime in on a little bit too. We we've been uh, kind of pre-ordering and kind of putting like the reservations now on a lot of our brand new Mercedes, including the GLE. It's one of our it's one of our best sellers, and we 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 kind of lucked out with a little bit of a bonus one from Mercedes. So fortunately, we have one on the showroom here today to show you. Uh, it's kind of like our larger midsize, again, kind of right in the middle of the Mercedes lineup when it comes to uh, sport utility sizing. And we're going to kind of take you through it a little bit here. Since we've at the moment lost Scott, I guess I'll I was start gonna going, say, I going, going lost over it a little Am bit. Am I here? Can you hear uh, me? We can hear you. We just lost the picture. The well, here, Anthony, I'll help you out. We'll get no started. Problem. <laughs> one of the things that makes the, that sets this GLE 350 apart from some of the others is this one has the AMG Sportline package. You can see by its muscular good looks, AMG style wheels, it's a GLE 350 that looks like it's been working out a little bit. It has a much more muscular uh, and commanding presence going down the road. was recently redesigned just a couple of years ago, 2020. They fully redesigned the GLE and GLS, made them quite a bit longer. Actually, where most of that space is coming in is in the back. So if you look at the rear door, you'll notice a really, really expansive back seat, a lot of space in the back, uh, four and a half inches longer from the last gen. So the vehicle continues to get a little bit longer, but also a little bit lighter, using a lot more aluminum, using better types of materials. It's a lot more road ready, a lot more flexible. Uh, one of the big things I always like to touch on about that when it comes to weight and handling with Mercedes SUVs is these are essentially like car platforms when it comes to uh, how it rides and how it drives. There's a lot of big luxury SUVs out there on the road today that drive very truck-like, uh, and that's not the case with these. Uh, the GLE, the GLS, these drive uh, very, very car-like. So if you're looking to maybe make that migration from a car to a sport utility, a little bit of an easier uh, adjustment. I think whenever you're talking about vehicles like the GLE. And when you talk about drivability, one thing to keep in mind too, all LED lighting all the way around. So at nighttime, it lights up the road very, very effectively. Even those tail lamps that we're looking at right now are LED. So they actually project the red light behind you much further so that uh, the people behind you can actually see you much more effectively. So it's uh, a safety aspect and it's also a, a good looks aspect too. 
If you look at that, the grill on this car that has the diamonds in it, because that one does have the AMG Sportline package. It is a uh, much sharper look for the car. Uh, and like Anthony was talking about, the way it's designed, it's built just like we would a car. It's a unit body construction, so it's going to hold the road much more uh, comfortably, and you can, you know, actually throw that car into a curve at 65, 70 miles an hour without having to hit the brakes like you normally would have to in more of a truck framed uh, SUV because it's designed to handle the road and you would drive it just like you would drive a sports car. I'll say welcome back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we can see you now. <laughs> there we go. Now we can Let's see say. how big that back seat is. One of the uh, one of the comments on the previous body GLE before 2020 was the back seat was too small. So they, uh, like Anthony touched on, actually made that back seat four inches longer in the door to give you so much more space back there. A a large premium SUV should be comfortable and people shouldn't feel cramped. So that's what we did for you there. Also, you can see all the USB ports throughout. Um, the car has the standard MBUX. Uh, intelligent interface so using the technology in the car is very easy you just need to know two words those words are hey mercedes and from there you can pretty much do ask the car to do anything that you want it to do uh, it does have the touch screen as well and you can pinch it just like you would one say on your phone it's very easy to use and it's very familiar to you so uh, very intuitive simple to use and most of our customers absolutely love it because it's so simple and so user friendly. It's definitely one of the biggest things evolving, I think, with the Mercedes Benz brand is the customer facing tech. Um, our brand was always really, really known for a lot of the technology that you really don't see. Um, a lot of the engineering, a lot of the safety technology, a lot of the, the just, just the build quality and the way that the vehicles are kind of almost over engineered. Um, and now what you're really, really starting to see from the brand in, in recent years, I think in, uh, like probably in particular in the last like five to seven years, is the fact that the customer facing tech has just grown leaps and bounds when it comes to um, the amount of capability now that you can uh, control different features. <clears throat> so, so many different uh, uh, like features on the vehicle itself with the new operating system. And one of the really, really cool things too, and Scott touched on it a little bit, is the number of ways you can operate all the new interfaces with Mercedes-Benz. I know I have a lot of clients uh, maybe making the switch to Mercedes-Benz. And one of the first things I always get asked is, well, I see there's a control in the center. I see there's a control on the screen. I see there's controls on the wheel. And that was intentional. The idea is you can find what's most comfortable for you and operate the car with that. So if it's most comfortable for you to never take your hands off the wheel, you can quite literally do that on a Mercedes and feel safer and feel like you have full control. Um, if it's better for you to use voice control, the way Scott mentioned, that's something where um, you, if you're not maybe as techy about touching things, you can just talk to the car, which is pretty cool. Um, you can jump on the touch screen itself, which I know is becoming popular on a lot of models. You have the touch pad, which feels kind of like your smartphone would. So they really made it to where I think a lot of different users, whether they've had Mercedes or maybe never had a Mercedes, uh, maybe coming from an older car, newer car, whatever, can can get into a lot of our newer uh, vehicles and find pretty quick that it's not really that hard to work. Um, so it's it's surprisingly uh, functional and I think surprisingly easy for how complex it may look on the surface when it actually comes to all the different ways that you can control the capabilities of the car. Mm -hmm. So whatever is easiest for you, they have a way that you can do it that way. Yep. That screen is just massive in the front or the dash, I guess. The customer response from that screen has been overwhelmingly positive. It is nice and long. It fills up the entire dash. And it's a very clean, but at the same time, uh, practical and usable look to it. So it's very attractive and people really seem to gravitate towards it. You can reach with your right hand, reach up there if you want to and touch it. And the controls in front of you are completely programmable. So you can select the information that you want to see. It doesn't just have to be speedometer and tack and that's it. You can program it to show you fuel economy. You can control the radio stations from that side. You can even have your nav instructions right there in front of you so you don't even need to do a quick glance to your right. 
it's all right there and at your fingertips. The response has just been overwhelmingly positive from that particular dash design. People love it. Awesome. So everyone that's just might now be chiming in, just a reminder, if you have any questions, please leave them all throughout the live. Anthony and Scott can answer them in real time. Um, before we move on to another vehicle, was there anything else that you guys wanted to say about the GLE 350? Although we don't have one uh, sitting here, at least at the moment, in the showroom to show off the uh, GLS vehicle that we make as well, there's there's actually a lot of similarities. Um, so if it's uh, a vehicle that you're also considering is something with a standard third row. So it is optional now on the GLE. Uh, the particular one that we have sitting here does not have the third row option, but it is available. Uh, we do, of course, offer the GLS as well, which gives you a little bit of additional length in the back and a standard third row. They offer it in a six seat or seven seat configuration. And from a design standpoint and a lot of the tech, it's very, very similar style of vehicle. Um, so again, if you're considering a GLS, you're, you're seeing a lot of it in the GLE. And one other thing to know too, later in the program, we're gonna talk more about availability and acquisition. So um, this particular car we're looking at is available right now and it's moderately priced. I happen to have the build sheet here too. It looks fantastic. It has all the most popular equipment, and it's only $64,795. So it's not overly built, and it still has that sharp look. So this particular car is available right now. Awesome. So what we're kind of seeing in 2022 is everyone's moving to electric vehicles or, you know, kind of debuting their first electric vehicle. We have a video of the EQS. I think we could probably show viewers now. What happens when electric vehicle meets Mercedes-Benz? This is the all-new Mercedes-Benz EQS. This one specifically being the EQS 450, an all-new sub-brand of Mercedes-Benz, similar to how we have AMG within our performance division. This is our all new electric vehicle line from Mercedes-Benz. The EQS being the first and being the flagship of the brand. This is an EQS 450, all new for this year with an EQS 580 coming soon. Very impressive vehicle, all new from the ground up. So this is not a redesign. This is not any kind of a refresh. This is an all new model. And this is exciting because this is all new infrastructure for the Mercedes-Benz brand. Going to be talking to you a little bit today about specifically the EQS as well as the EQ subdivision within the Mercedes-Benz brand and what it means for the future of Mercedes-Benz. All right, so for a visual walk around of the exterior of the vehicle, right from the start, you notice a very striking brand new grill on the EQ line. Uh, one of the first things I noticed when I saw it for the first time is the all new grill design around the central star. Uh, those are actually small Mercedes stars built into this new uh, sort of star blocked grill. If you think back to our diamond block grill we have on a lot of our sports cars and coupes, this is an all new grill design for Mercedes, uh, which is going to be popularized on the EQs as well as some upcoming models. A few other things that you'll note is this sort of central light band on the middle where you have LED lights, not only on the exterior here, but actually across the center. And we're gonna see that again around back as well. When we work our way to the headlights, something very cool about this new headlight design, this is the all new Mercedes-Benz digital light. And this digital light has quite a few cool effects to it, including individualized pixels within the light assembly. Uh, this is very sophisticated technology. Think of it a lot like almost like laser light technology. Um, so you have the ability now to project individual LED elements out of the light assembly themselves, it's tremendous. Uh, has a lot of cool tricks up its sleeve when it comes to driving and notating things on the road while you're driving. Along the side, you're gonna notice a lot of new wheel designs. Every one of them having a lot of very cool aerodynamic features to make the car a little bit better when it comes to efficiency. So actually the reason for this sort of little arrow designed wing in the center is to improve efficiency and improve the overall range of the vehicle. Something else you notice along the side is this new sort of slot here in the upper 
left corner of the vehicle. That is actually your windshield washer fluid slot. No longer will you be opening the hood. You'll notice the hood is actually sealed closed. It is no longer needed to access because you're not putting anything in under the hood of the vehicle. Again, with the washer fluid slot here. You're also going to notice this different design up front, how this is slotted a little bit below the wheel. This once again improves aerodynamics, improves efficiency. Along the side, you're going to see the all new seamless door handle design popularized in the new generation S Class. Additionally, the EQS is a four door coupe, so it is actually not a sedan. You're going to see the same frameless design with the doors, popularized by the CLS, the GT four door, before it. As we work our way along, the all new sort of DNA inspired helix design of the rear taillight. Very, very cool assembly here. Once again, with the light band going the entire way across. Badging on the outside, new design of the badging here, star in the center. Once again, we'll be able to open the trunk with the star itself. And this one's very sharp. This is actually in the uh, all new Onyx Black, only offered on the EQS and the S Class. Let's take it for a drive. See, it not only looks like a space shuttle, it sounds like one. Whole new feel to this car. One of the first things you realize, I think, when you get inside is it, it uh, from an appointment standpoint, really feels like a proper S-Class. It feels like a proper flagship. Uh, the overall design, the layout, a lot of the technology, you're going to recognize much of this if you've seen the new design of the S-Class since this, this past redesign. Uh, much of the design of the stocks, design of the wheel, uh, some of the controls that you see over here, some of the look of the display. Um, this has a lot of S-Class in it. Um, however, there are some differences, so we're going to cover a few of those as well. But you definitely feel that high-end luxury appointment feature that you expect from a flagship Mercedes. Lots of different types of materials. Uh, the piano lacquer design down here, the all-new central display of the Mercedes-Benz user experience. This really cool display here that I absolutely love. You can see so much information on the screen behind your steering wheel. Um, I really like what they've done with the side panels. One of the one of the first things I noticed uh, in my first time sitting inside of an EQS was not only the styling here, but the use of all new materials. Um, I loved the fact that they're using some really cool new materials, many of which are actually made from recycled uh, fibers. You have a lot of recycled metals, even with the way this vehicle is built. About 70% of the metal is actually from recycled sources. This all new Neotex. It's kind of like a uh, micro suede, creates a really nice sort of high-end designer feel with the new stitching and across the panels here. Some new woods, this is the uh, natural grain gray oak wood, which has been sort of inset here into the center console and along the side panels. And it's just so quiet. I think that's one of the first things you realize when you get in this car is it's everything about it is so quiet. And the power is awesome. I mean, it is effortless. You put your foot down on this vehicle and it is all there instantly. Um, it's shocking how fast you can get up to highway speeds with very little pressure on the accelerator. Just something about having a car with no lag. I mean, having batteries, it's like turning a light switch on. Something that I had as a question to some of the reps from Mercedes-Benz was in regards to the paddle shifters doesn't have a transmission. So I saw paddle shifters, I saw a plus and a minus, and I thought, why are there paddle shifters on the car? Well, the concept there actually has to do with the energy recuperation. So right now, you'll notice in the gauge, we're actually driving at what's called normal recuperation. So these are different drive modes uh, within the vehicle, kind of like how the uh, dynamic select feature is. It sort of kind of plays hand in hand with that a bit, but it changes your acceleration patterns and how the recuperation is with uh, accelerating, decelerating in the car. So again, we're driving at what's considered normal right now. If I toggle a paddle shifter, you're going to see it now says strong recuperation. So what I noticed immediately when I did that with the minus side here is it's a lot quicker to respond and brake now with me simply taking my foot off the accelerator. I'm not actually hitting the brake pedal, but the car is braking. This is sort of something you're starting to see from some electric cars, which is kind of like a one pedal drive, where you sort of get a little bit of that, almost like electric golf cart feel. 
uh, which is pretty cool where you can sort of drive with one pedal in a lot of ways. You basically can use your accelerator and not until you're trying to come to a complete stop do you ever actually touch your brake. You'll still find in the strong recuperation if you hit the accelerator, you still have a ton of power. But again, when you let off, you brake much faster. The car is actually trying to save uh, sort of some of that lost acceleration to help kind of charge the battery and save save some of the power. And as you probably guessed, if I press the plus sign, I can switch back to normal recuperation. Additionally, if I press the plus sign again, I have what's called no recuperation. Now you're going to notice in the gauge is it not only brings it up here, but it also does where the drive reads out. So right now it says D+. Plus. If I toggle into normal, it says D. If I toggle into strong, it says D-. minus. So this minus and plus is kind of a cool way where you can literally control accelerator feedback and how the vehicle performs as you're driving it. As you probably guessed, in the D+, plus, the no recuperation, put your foot down, it's unreal. I mean, you have access to 100% of the vehicle power almost instantly. Got to watch out for that because I'm going to accelerate far faster than the other cars around me on the road. So it's, it's pretty unbelievable. Definitely more your performance feel if you want to toggle it to the no recuperation is you're getting all the power instantly. Speaking of some of the gauge details, you're going to notice some changes here. Not only is this a little bit of a different design than what you may be used to seeing from Mercedes-Benz with this sort of all-new instrument cluster, you're going to see some of it taken from the all-new S-Class and some of these gauge designs being unique to the EQS specifically. So, with the left side of the steering wheel here, we have the ability to control what sort of gauge cluster we have. We, of course, have Classic. Uh, we have a few gauge clusters which are designed around specific information being put in the full screen. Things like driver's assistance features, uh, full screen navigation, which is very cool. You can pull up a massive navigation screen right here in front of the driver. You also have the ability to change between some of these sort of sport settings where you can get real-time G-forces, percentage of the power that you're using. Um, this understated, which is a pretty cool, slick look. If you don't like a lot of information, don't really want the distraction, you can just pull up sort of like a clock and some basic information on screen. And within every one of these, we have the ability to customize gauge data as well. So if I, for example, go back to the classic gauge, you'll notice I can pull up things like radio, navigation, um, odometer, speed, etc., all on screen, whether it be in the center here or by hopping into individual gauges. Again, I'm doing this all simply with my left hand on the steering wheel. Below where I control the gauge, you'll notice I, of course, have all my controls for the cruise control, which oftentimes on the EQS is going to be adaptive. The Distronic system, which you're going to find for much of our sort of semi-autonomous drive features, are all capable right here. This is also going to include things like the uh, active blind spot, active lane keeping assist, etc. Right side of my wheel, have the ability to control everything on this display, which I can do so here, as well as controlling things like volume, calling, etc. As I can, of course, also control on screen. Massive touch screen, this is how you operate everything now. So whether you want to control your climate down here on the bottom or all of these menus, a few of which are selective to the EQ, including this all new EQ menu. So this is pretty cool. So there is literally a whole new page within the EQ settings now where you can control the EQ specific stuff. So what is EQ? So this is the new electric division, sort of like subdivision, if you will, of Mercedes-Benz. So what you're gonna see is within the nomenclature of every one of our all electric vehicles, you're gonna see the letters EQ. So this again, being an EQS, this is designed to be sort of our all electric S. Within this specific EQ menu, you'll notice when I click it, I instantly have charge data. So right off the get go, I can see about how much percentage power I have. I'm sitting on about 62% right now. The car is estimating about 219 miles. Cool thing about this is actually this. This vehicle is rated to have about 350 mile range. And you'll notice that I actually have more than that, despite the fact that I am showing 62%, 219 miles. It's an awful lot. It's quite a bit. And kind of the cool thing there just goes to show that depending on how you drive the car, you may actually find you get more than 350 mile range. Again, based on things like energy recuperation, how you're using the climate control, how you're driving. And you can pull a lot of that data up on screen all from this menu. You can click on these programs and even see different abilities to when you plug into a charger, how it, 
how it handles the charge. We'll be going through as well how to charge the EQS and showing off some of the cool capabilities within this menu once you are plugged in. You can control charging times, you can control how much power is sent to the vehicle over certain uh, times a day. So for example, if you're shooting for maybe off-peak hour charging to save on electric, you have that capability. You can also do much of this from the all-new app, which there's actually now a Mercedes EQ portion to the Mercedes Me Connect services, which will allow you from your phone to control uh, charging as your phone's plugged in. If I click on this range screen, something I like a lot is the ability to restrict. So if you're, if you're ever driving the EQS or any of the Mercedes EQs for an extended period of time, and you're worried at all about range. Say you're getting a little anxious about uh, pulling the absolute most range that you can out of the battery before needing to stop and charge. You can simply click on this range indicator here and you can restrict certain functions. And you'll actually see on screen it tell you how many miles you will gain by restricting certain climate control settings, interior design functions, seat comfort functions, etc. So you can actually turn certain elements of the car off that you may not even really be using anyway and save power, which is pretty awesome. Consumption menu gives you additional details as well, tells you about how efficiently you've been driving. Something else unique to the all new EQS is there are some different variants, both from a performance standpoint as well as to do with the powertrains offered. This vehicle we're driving right now is an EQS 450 Plus. This is actually a rear wheel drive Mercedes. The EQS 580 is the formatic offering with actually a second motor, so additional power. Again, depending on how much power that you're going for, there's even going to be an inbound AMG EQS coming soon with further performance characteristics. And they're offering some different versions throughout in terms of trim levels, so some of the equipment groupings as well as things like all-wheel drive and so on. So uh, once again, this is actually the rear-wheel drive. We're driving in the wintertime. It's handling great. If you're looking at it from the performance standpoint, you have a dynamic select feature here that still allows you to change the performance as well, similar to past Mercedes. You get that cool kind of feedback too. It sounds like a space shuttle. So you notice that sound feedback that we get? There are uh, sound profiles, several sound profiles offered on the EQS, which is actually what you're hearing. It gives you that feeling and that sort of sound that you expect to have some, you know, just sort of kind of interior effect or interior noise so you kind of know how fast you're going or realize that you have uh, kind of different power bands as you're accelerating because, again, there's no engine, there's no transmission shifting or anything for you. You can actually change how the car sounds too as you're driving it. You'll notice I can pull up a bunch of the advanced settings as well on screen here. When I click on this little EQ indicator along the side, it's pretty awesome. It'll in real time give me an idea about different charging stations and everything from parking spaces to full charging network on screen, which is pretty awesome. But I'll go through some of the menus here with you on screen. Actually, something else we have right now is we have our uh, augmented reality at work. So see how it's giving us this traffic light view? It's actually using a front-facing camera where if I'm using the navigation, I can superimpose the nav on screen in addition to when I get close to traffic lights, it can actually superimpose some of this detail. So it's kind of cool. I mean, you can be on the screen and actually see what's going on without even having to avert your eyes. So it makes it, makes it to where you can uh, do a few more things on screen without having to avert your eyes. Speaking of some of the other capabilities within the new settings menu on here, you're going to find some additional vehicle stuff such as sound experience where with any EQ vehicle, you'll find that... Now, you can also turn this feature off. So if it's something you don't like, if you want the vehicle to just be totally quiet, you can turn this feature off. However, if you like it, if you want to use it, you'll leave this trigger on. And if you hit this little settings gear here, you'll find that two sound experiences come with every EQS 450 or 580 from the factory, the Silver Waves and the Vivid Flux. So actually, I'll give you guys a little sound experience here so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So if we're in Silver Waves... Acceleration, deceleration, vivid flux,
How cool is that, right? And more sound experience profiles coming soon, including several of which that will likely sound like gasoline counterparts. So if you're someone that's wanting your electric vehicle to sort of sound like a gasoline vehicle, that will eventually be an option for you. Um, if you like these sort of sounds, you'll have that capability. So tons and tons and tons of standard safety equipment on the new EQS and likely coming to every EQ that you'll see from Mercedes-Benz from, of course, collision assist and active braking, blind spot assist monitoring on the sides and things like parking sensors all around the car, surround view camera. So something else we'll have to show off here in just a few moments. Um, lots and lots and lots of standard safety equipment, even things including, of course, electronic tensioning devices with the seat belts, your full pre-safe occupant uh, accident avoidance system. This particular one being equipped with the driver's assistance package gives it some additional semi-autonomous safety. So things like the adaptive cruise control system with the Stronic turns the lane keeping assist and blind spot assist into active assist features, meaning the car can actually avert back into the lane for you. Also, of course, every vehicle equipped with the parking assist it does have a self park feature where it can pull in back in parallel, uh, pull out, back out with very little driver input. Some pretty amazing features too from a charging standpoint. Again, the, the initial estimates are 350 mile range on the EQS 450, about 340 mile range on an EQS 580. I know there's quite a few companies out there that have already done some real world testing on both models and gotten even further range than, than, than that. So how cool is this camera? So you hit the parking assist feature here, and you're going to notice that right from the get-go, I mean, just an amazing array of cameras, right? So you can actually move around on the screen, too, on the fly. This is actually part of a rather new Mercedes feature as well, which is called Guard 360. And Guard 360, in addition to showing you all these cameras, has the capability that in the event it senses damage, uh, say possible theft, um, somebody striking the vehicle in a parking lot, something like that, has the capability to actually do a recording of the next few moments to record on screen using these cameras what's happening around the vehicle. So you have some extra layer of security, including literally a surround series of cameras and sensors on the fly. And these are operable as well if the vehicle's off. So that is kind of a very cool new feature with the theft and uh, just to kind of help to protect the car on the fly. In addition to helping you when you park. So of course we have a series of 360 degree parking sensors as well as cameras. We also have the capability on screen that if you wanted to use the autonomous parking feature, you'll notice that we can simply click where it says parking assist. And just as the screen says here, drive forward to search for parking spaces. So as we drive forward with this vehicle past various parking spaces, you will actually see the spots appear on screen. Simply click the indicator, choose your direction. So if you want to pull in or back in, you'll notice it gives you that option. It'll also offer you on screen to just click the parking button, which you'll find there rear camera image and you'll notice the car is backing up. Now this differs a little bit from past iterations of the parking where it would actually have you engage the reverse gear. You no longer have to. Now you simply can press, press the parking indicator again and the car will handle that aspect for you. Something else I like with the new parking assist is you do have the capability to control speed at which this is happening. So if this is happening a little too quick for you, if you wanna slow the process down, you can press your brake and you can pause the parking process. You also at any time have the ability to just take over with the wheel, in which case the green indicators on the screen will go away and you will then as the driver be in control. But it's a pretty awesome job. I didn't have to jump in at all. So that's a real good example of how the autonomous parking aid can quite literally park for you. How do you charge? It's very easy. It is like putting gas in your car. It's exceptionally simple. So you will notice around back where we would typically have a fuel door on the gasoline vehicles, there is a port. Pushing on the back of the door will open the port. Inside, here is your plug. You'll notice every Mercedes-Benz EQ vehicle, including the EQS, uses the commonly found J-plug design, five pin or seven pin. What are the differences, you may ask? So, the five pin is used for the AC level two charging. If you have a charger that you'll notice has those five pins, you know it's level two, you simply plug into the slot there. If you are at a DC fast charging slot, you'll notice the J-plug uses seven pins, in which case you use this entire component you see here. Again, that's the faster charge. So the way that works is actually in this vehicle, 
there is a charging unit. That charging unit has the capability for 9.6 kilowatt AC charging, which again is level two. It also has capability of 200 kilowatt DC fast charging, which is level three. So a very cool charging unit built into the vehicle, built in with the high voltage cables and the batteries that allows for charging. When you're at a charging station, similar to what you see in front of me, exterior ones will look a lot like this. We'll show you some images as well of what an interior one may look like. This happens to be one of the charge point stations that you see here. This happens to be a two port charging station where of course we could charge two EVs at one time. You'll notice a very simple to use component right here, which you simply click down and remove. The way to use this particular station is you simply use the screen first. Once payment inf information is input here using something like a credit card or a charge point account, you simply click below, remove the charger and insert into the vehicle. It couldn't be simpler. Something else Mercedes also does inside the port here is they give you a color coding system to let you know exactly what's going on while you charge. So you're going to notice it actually uses some colors along here to show you White for the vehicle is simply unlocked, the port is open. The blue indicators to let you know about current charging, being charged, fully charged, yellow indicators to let you know things like the vehicle is in pause mode, which you can do from the inside and so on. So you always know what's going on using a nice little color coded system here. When it's time to remove the charger, very easy to do so, simply pressing the charging stop indicator here and removing the plug. Additionally, many level two chargers, including ones that can be right in your home, look like this. So this actually happens to be a charge point station that can be installed right in your home. This exact charger right here was about $699. So about a $700 charger could be installed right on the wall or in a standalone spot in your garage at your home. And you'll notice it actually has the charger attached right here, which very simple to use. Once again, this is the five pin AC level two charging that you see here, which will of course again differ from the seven pin look. You'll notice it's actually plugged into a 220 outlet. So that was our test drive in the all new Mercedes EQS. If you have any questions, if you'd like to see one for yourself, please do not hesitate to visit us at Smale Mercedes-Benz here in Greensburg or visit us on the web at smalemercedesbenz.com. <laughs> I missed the memo. It's <laughs> a formal request, I think, afterwards, you know, to, to kind of rock the stylish glasses afterwards. <laughs> Anthony, that had to be the most thorough, like, best explanation I've ever seen or, you know, video well, for you. any of the vehicles. There's, there's a lot of fun stuff with the new EVs. Um, I think it's definitely given a lot of us that work for the brand and, and, and really work for a lot of different brands now that are getting into EVs to kind of have an opportunity to learn about a cool new product, um, learn about a lot of the kind of the, the benefits of moving to EV. And the EQ line as a whole from Mercedes, the more you know, the kind of, kind of the more exciting it is. Uh, there's so much cool stuff coming out. I mean, Mercedes is literally looking at doing a EV version of basically every vehicle that we make. Um, so it's just it's going to be super super cool to see uh, like moving forward with all the uh, all the new advancements in technology, and then how that's also going to play into the advancements with autonomy, and then the advancements, of course, with having having the the full electric cars. So having this EQS, it's a big opportunity for us. Uh, it really lets us kind of see what the flagship is designed to look like. And there's a lot of EQs on the way. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, Anthony, with all these cars coming, there'll be an electric version of the GLB. The, EQ, the EQE is uh, on its way, too. So we should have something yeah. in the EQ space in pretty much every price point and every body style within the next three to five years. Wow. It's crazy. It's like, I keep saying like the future is here, but it's, you know, a couple of years ago, it was crazy to think about all this and it's happening. Like, electric vehicles are, you know, going to become the norm here soon. And I think a lot of it too is the more that a lot of us are learning about from the brand. And, and that's definitely something I can really point to a lot with, with Mercedes is they're doing a really good job at informing us um, a lot of information, not just about the cars and about charging times and about batteries and stuff like that, but they're doing a lot to kind of walk us through, I think as sales consultants and then, you know, as potential EV owners ourselves, to kind of understand like the logistics behind it. You know, that's why I, I, like I know in the, in the video, I wanted to get into a little bit about actually charging and plugging in and, how easy it is to install one of these in your home. That's, that's I think, more real-world stuff that we get asked a lot. I mean, I, I, like I know 
when I have conversations uh, uh, with some clients now about EVs, it's one of the first things that people ask you is, well, where am I going to plug in? How long is it going to take? You know, can I do this in my house? I don't know where a charger is. So it's, it's that real world. Uh, you kind of take the edge off, kind of take the anxiety level down when you're kind of able to explain and show somebody that, you know, this is getting easier. There is going to be more charging network. The infrastructure is improving. There's a lot of money being invested to make the infrastructure better. And you can make a small, you know, investment on your own in a lot of cases in your home with your garage. And what's really cool too is Ben's using the J-Plug design that they're using. Um, that's pretty universal. That's just about every single brand in the auto industry uses it. So um, even in the event that you at some point maybe don't have a Mercedes EV or you have another brand's EV, you're going to be able to use this charger. So it's a genuine investment you can make in your house, um, which moving forward, again, people are going to see a lot of value. in. so I think there's a lot of uh, kind of long-term value that can be seen there to, to a lot of prospective buyers for sure. Awesome. Again, everyone that's um, chiming in from home, feel free to keep asking questions. Um, you know, we'll get Anthony or Scott to get back to you. Um, so moving along, I think we're going to start looking at the GLC 300. There she is. GLC 300 has been our most popular. I also want to call it a bread and butter model for the last couple of years. It appears to be one of those cars that just checks all the boxes. We're talking about price point, size, maneuverability, looks. It is basically replaced its sedan counterpart, the C300, up to this point in that space. It's a little higher off the ground, has plenty of trunk space in the back, good sized back seat, very maneuverable. Depending upon how you have the car equipped, anywhere from about 49000 to maybe, say, fifty five, which is a comfortable spot in price point these days. Option very well and very comfortable and very, very enjoyable to drive. It's essentially an elevated C-Class. I mean, it's amazing. It, uh, it was such a simple concept in some ways from Mercedes when you look back to them redesigning the C-Class in 15, uh, doing the GLC in 16. It was such a... It was kind of such a smart idea to come up with the the idea of basically building a sport utility on the C-Class platform. And for so many buyers, uh, especially in this market, I think in the U.S., with how uh, how how SUV driven of a market that it really is in the States, uh, this vehicle, is just it's been huge for the brand. Uh, it's been our best seller in the U.S. for quite a few years in a row now, really since it came out. Um, and it's it's great because it's at, a, it's at a really, really attainable price point. I mean, typically GLC is right around 50000 and it's so much vehicle. I mean, it's definitely one of those those cars too that I know with with, with a lot of my clients. Um, seeing it from the outside, it will give you a little bit of that kind of more smaller, compact feel in terms of parking and, and like usability on the road. But once you're inside, it's really roomy. Uh, they did a great job with the design of this vehicle in terms of how much space that they sort of shelled out of it. So for a lot of folks that I have that are maybe coming out of something a little more kind of larger midsize SUV, I've had a lot of people get into a GLC and be really impressed with the space. So I think it's I think it's kind of that really good sweet spot for a lot of buyers, kind of like Scott mentioned. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really makes it shine is, like Anthony mentioned, it is an elevated C-Class. It, truly, it is. You can take the floor mats out of a C and put them in a GLC because they fit. But that also gives you the handling, the maneuverability, the enjoyable drive that you would get from a sports sedan but in that elevated suv style vehicle so you truly aren't giving anything up when you move to the more elevated vehicle none whatsoever very enjoyable to drive yeah i know whenever i was looking inside i mean it, yeah it looks huge inside very roomy it does it, de it, it definitely gives you a lot of space but again with that's kind of more compact uh footprint, you know, and that's something I think big with a lot of Mercedes sort of smaller SUVs now, uh, not only to talk about just, just, just about it with the GLC, but even like if you look down to our uh, GLA, you know, our, our most compact size. And that's something where when they recently redesigned the GLA this past year, they did a great job doing the same thing, hollowing a lot more space out of the inside, the, the design of the new interface with the Mercedes user experience, the uh, just, just kind of the way that they elevated the floor lowered, or excuse me, I'll, I'll like, I'll like lowered the floor, elevated the ceiling. Uh, they just, they, they've been doing a lot of things from a design standpoint, Ben's has, when it comes to uh, shelling out a lot of additional space. And again, kind of like I was talking about with, with on the GLE, 
even the use of materials is big, you know, using more aluminum, saving weight, uh, using some of these newer transmissions and, you know, more efficient engines, all this stuff helps, you know, when you start shaving weight and you pull more power out of, you know, turbochargers and smoother transmissions, I mean, it's making just a faster, quicker, just overall more fun to drive vehicle. And yet you're getting extra space. You know, it's mm -hmm. just how technology is changing from an engineering standpoint, too. It's not just the screens. It's the tech and how they actually are building the cars. And something else to touch on about that when we talk about materials, it's important to know where those materials in the car are. The aluminum pretty much is in the body, the uh, the door panels, that sort of thing, hoods uh, across the across the, the car like that. But in still inside, inside the body shell, the part that protects you, that's still the low carbon, high strength steel we've always been known for. You put that together with a full time all wheel drive system and that turbocharged four cylinder, which does 255 horsepower, which to put that in perspective is considerably more than a mid eighties IROC Camaro at only 188. You get a lot of power on the ground on all, on all four wheels, which not only gives you traction in all kinds of weather, but actually propels you very quickly to give you that quick snappy performance that, uh, that most folks want. And you combine that with a uh, very maneuverable, good size vehicle, it's a one-two punch and a very hard combination to walk away from. Awesome. Again, for everyone that's just now chiming in, don't forget to ask questions or leave comments. Um, both Scott and Anthony can get back to you about any questions that you'll leave. Um, we do have a G-Class overview, um, the G-Wagon. I know I'm interested <laughs> in checking out. <laughs> Maybe we'll go ahead and we'll play that now. Well, hello, Scott Powell from Bud Smell Mercedes-Benz in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, here to do a brief overview video on one of Mercedes-Benz's most storied and desirable vehicles. This is the new 2021 G550. The G-Wagon, as sometimes it's called, is one of those iconic vehicles. Why is it iconic? Well, look at the shape of it. It is, it is squared off. It almost looks like a military vehicle. Well, there's a reason it has that military look to it, and that's because that's how it originally started. The genesis of this vehicle goes back nearly half a century, back in the days when the Shah of Iran was a major stakeholder in uh, Daimler-Benz. He owned nearly 5% of the company and wanted a paramilitary vehicle built for his army. Well, this is what they came up with. That wasn't nearly as pretty as this, a uh, lot more utilitarian, but uh, this is where this vehicle began. It weighs almost 7,000 pounds gross weight, actual curb weight's about 5,500, so it's extremely heavy. And uh, the way this car is designed with the amount of wax in the chassis, the reason this car costs so much is because you could buy one of these cars and if you maintained it properly, you would never need to replace it. Let's start at the front of the G550. Notice the way this car is designed. It is very square. The front end is completely flat. The grill guard here is a standard feature. You don't have to pay anything extra for it. And notice the way the turn signals are mounted on top of the vehicle. There's LED lamps in there, so they shine very brightly and they're very prominent. Even the star right here on the front of the grill says Mercedes-Benz all the way through. Now notice the color of the G550. This is a special color called Dezino Night Black Magno. Magno is a term that Mercedes-Benz uses for any of their matte finish paints. This car had, does not have a shine to it. It has a sheen. There is a deep black paint on there, but it has a matte finish clear coat on top. What that clear coat does is it gives it that matte, silky, smooth look. Now, most places you go, the G-Wagon is going to be really a boulevard cruiser, but it does have extreme off-road capabilities. You can find some videos on YouTube of people doing crazy things with the G-Wagon. It has the locking differentials, and it's the only vehicle we made that has a full-size spare tire mounted on the back. Why do we put it there? Well, that's where it belongs. But even look at the taillights down here. They're low and tucked in. That way they, they stay out of the way, and there's uh, less... Uh, opportunity for damage without the car. And the low slung uh, rear bumper and the trailer hitch, of course. Have a look inside. On all of our other cars, Mercedes-Benz makes the pull door handle. These are different on the G-Wagon. It's the only one that has a push button. And it's because of the locks on this car are completely different. Listen to the sound of this. 
plenty of room back there, but look at these hinges. Look how heavy these hinges are. The reason, and just this door itself is very heavy, is to keep them closed. And this car has what I like to call the bank vault sound on all four, all five of the doors. Give it a little, a little slam like this. Does that sound heavy or what? Built like a tank? Almost. <laughs> but still outfitted like a luxury vehicle. Plenty of room here in the back seat. Love the way those doors sound. I'm gonna put this headrest up out of the way so I have a little bit more room. I'm 5'10", 165. Plenty of room back here and very comfortable. Well, we hop inside. You gotta stand up just a little bit on the running board. Inside we go. Love this interior color. It is called uh, porcelain white. We have a beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel. Of course, it is a Mercedes Benz, so you've got the most wonderful luxury accoutrements. The, uh, one of the striking features of this car is the trim that was put in. This is called Metal Weave. It's around here, over top of the cup holders, and in the door panels. Absolutely beautiful trim on the car. Turn it on. Of course, you have navigation, satellite radio, everything you would expect. Your door. The window switches are up here, heated and ventilated seats, memory seats, all of your controls are right at your fingertips, intelligent cruise control, all of it. These switches here are for the locking differentials. Like I said, usually these cars are boulevard cruisers, but there's no reason why you can't take it deep, deep, deep into the woods. And you really can't appreciate it right now in daylight in the showroom, but it does have 64 colors of ambient lighting. So if you are unhappy with the blue that's on right now, well, what about pink? You can do pink, red, there's greens available. Orange is in buff and plain old white. G-Wagons have always been a little bit hard to get just because of availability. They only make so many of them. They make them at a special factory at the foot of Mount Schockel in Austria. But recently you may have heard that the because of the chip supply issue, they weren't making the 416 horsepower V8 anymore. Well, that's come to an end. We're starting to build the V8 again and the order banks are open. The easiest way to get a G-Class order the car exactly the way you like it. Come see us at Bud Smell Mercedes-Benz in Greensburg, right on Route 30. Or check us out online at smellmercedesbenz.com. That one's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> like you said, iconic. <laughs> well, it's just so heavy. It, it, it feels so, it, it just feels like it weighs a million pounds and not quite that much, but there's a certain solidness to that car. Uh, we're not terribly worried about uh, fuel economy with that. Not that it does very badly. It doesn't. We're worried, we're more concerned with capability and ruggedness. And like I mentioned in the video, most of Boulevard cruisers, but you could take that car deep, deep into the wilderness and be just fine. So it does both things and it does both things very well. Wonderful vehicle. It's about the only uh, vehicle in the world that looks as at home on the red carpet as it does on the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the iconic factor about a G-Class. I, I get asked a lot, a lot of folks that have always kind of admired the style or know somebody that has, why do they cost so much? why what makes the g-class so you know different kind of price point different kind of exclusivity and once you kind of see like what scott mentioned about the engineering about the build quality um everything from the doors to just how the vehicle's assembled to such an iconic design i mean we 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 have them that come in for service that are 20 years old 30 years old you know 40 years old and they still look like they could be a new car today. It's just, it, it's it's a different kind of animal when it comes to just how exclusive that look is. And that's a big part of why they are what they are to this brand. And when you think about it, the Galanda Vogue and the G-Class as a whole, that's a vehicle that um, is just, again, it's, it's built like no other car in the world. And that's what makes it such an iconic vehicle for the Mercedes-Benz brand. It literally could be the last car you ever buy. You would mm -hmm. never need to replace it if you maintained it. Crazy. I knew, sorry, I really like that. I think you said it was Magno, the finish. Oh yeah. I really like that the in the black as well. 
So there are other colors that are available in the Magno finish. And Magno is a word that Mercedes-Benz uses for matte. For matte. So mm -hmm. There's other colors available too. And of course, what, what, what people don't really understand is with the G-Class, that has the deepest color palette of any model we make. I, I, I haven't counted them in a while. There's like 25 different colors. And I think at least, uh, what do you think, Anthony, four or five Magno matte finishes? Oh, there's a bunch. Yeah, it's it seems like they continue to expand upon the the color array that you can get now on some of the specialty vehicles. And the G class is definitely one of those where, um, in particular, if you order a G, which is which is generally speaking the way that you have to get a G, um, it's it's one of those vehicles that the way you can customize them is unbelievable. Um, I've had a few clients that that's one of those you really, from an ordering standpoint, you kind of want to sit down and talk over some colors, show some pictures, and it's uh, you can really make it super exclusive from like a design standpoint in terms of the interior, the exterior of the vehicle. So uh, you can really build it however you want. And one other thing to keep in mind with doing an order like that on that car, most everything is standard on anyway. So when you're talking about an order, we're talking about truly colors, we're talking about interior colors different types of leather, whether or not you have leather pull handles, trim. It's not so much individual options as it is uh, uh, getting into the materials themselves and what color you want them to be and what kind of feel you want them to have. It's truly an amazing experience ordering a, uh, a G-Class. Just one of those wonderful things. Awesome. So one thing I did want to touch on, once you buy a Mercedes, um, with the service and um, some things that customers can expect when they come to Smail Auto, what um, we do with service. We're going to go ahead. We have a message from Vinny. Hey, guys. My name is Vinny Greco. I'm a service writer here for Smail Auto Group. And today I'm going to be going over a couple things with My Karma. We partnered with them for 2022, and we're going to go over some things that help out with our customers here at Service. One of the good points about My Karma is you're now able to schedule everything online. If you're not able to pick up a telephone to call in to schedule with one of us service advisors or the call center, you're able to go to smellautogroup.com. Um, at that time, you're able to select your brand and select the appointment time and date that best fits your schedule. Um, and so that way we can get you in at an early convenience. Upon arrival into the dealership, another good thing about the My Karma is as long as your cell phone's attached to your account, we're able to send you a text message. So that way you're able to communicate with your advisor through text messaging. So let's say if you're out in the office or you're on a conference phone call, we're able to text you. Another good point about My Karma is, let's say you're coming in with uh, a noise. Um, you got a front noise coming when you're making left turns. We're able to actually send you videos and pictures of what's going on with the vehicle um, that you can view in real time um, and text us back. So that way you don't have to be here um, to see everything. So that's another good point. Um, and another good thing is we can also now send you invoices to text messaging. So that way, if you're going to be picking up after hours, you're able to pay via text message, a secure link, which notifies your service writer, and we can print the receipt and attach it to your multi-point inspection. Um, multi-point inspection, those are complimentary with every service. You do get your tire specs, your brake specs. We will let you know what's upcoming with service and also what could be addressed at your time um, with the mileage on your vehicle. A lot of the time is waiting on phone calls and communication back and forth from the clients. So that what we're trying to do is cut that out so that way we can have direct contact with our clients to get their vehicles done in a you know, timely fashion and in the right way. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, I'm Vinny Greco, one of the service advisors here at Smell Auto Group. Make sure you stop on in Route 30 East in Greensburg, PA, or check us out online at smellauto.com. All righty. I know we're going to be wrapping up here shortly. Um, just a reminder for everyone about the giveaway we have going on this week. Go visit smellcars.com slash enter. We're giving away an Apple Watch, an Apple TV. We have a Smell gift bucket with a complimentary detail. It's a quick form. You fill out real quickly, and then you could potentially walk up with one of these prizes. But all right, guys, you have been fantastic this entire segment. 
Is there anything you guys want to say before we head off or head I out? I want the gift bucket. I want the bucket. <laughs> yep. Is your car a little dirty? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely um, stop by and visit. Uh, if you ever have questions about the Mercedes vehicles, stop by and see us. Call, reach out. Uh, you know, anytime somebody has a question about the cars, we're always more than happy to help. Smell MercedesBenz.com, and we'd love to see you. Whether you come through the door or through the computer, we're always uh, more than happy to uh, pitch in and help out and make your make your automotive dreams come true at Smell Mercedes Benz because that's what we do. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been the 2022 Budsmill Motorcars Virtual Auto Show. See you guys.